while there's blessedness that come with being a pastor's kid, there's also challenges that come with it. The rest of this video contains the testimony of my nephew, Ezekiel Ong, who from ages 13 to 17 went through bouts of depression. By God's grace, he is better now. In fact, he is in his final year in a seminary and is just grateful that God saw him through a very dark season in his life. I hope that you will be blessed listening and viewing his focus testimony. Enjoy. God bless you. I was exposed to a very judgmental community at a young age. I remember the feeling of the weight of their eyes and every move I made. But that's just how life is when you're the son of the lead pastor. I can recall how whenever I misbehaved, they would threaten to tell my parents. Funny, I wasn't afraid of what they might do. I was afraid of what I might not be able to do because my parents enjoyed grounding me back then. That kind of environment really made me avoid church. I became aloof. I had trust issues. Whenever I receive recognition, I just shrug it off and think, oh, they're just saying that because I'm a pastor's kid. And for the longest time, I wasn't able to be natural in the church environment. I became very conscious of everybody's judgments that I created this persona I use whenever I enter church. As I grew distant from the church, I started gaining friends from my first year of high school, and I saw how godless and lost they were. Don't get me wrong, they were really fun to be around, but I can't help but feel like I needed to do something. So I just lied. I lied to them and told them we were going to this party with food, because Filipinos love parties with food. Just like that, I had them on my hook. We went to our youth ministry where we had a great time. We were singing, dancing, playing games. They even listened to the sermon. What about the food, you ask? I just bought them food from across the street. Two years later and half of our class were regular attendees in the youth ministry. And needless to say, I was proud of myself. But my problem remained the same, if not worse. Because now I wasn't able to act natural around my classmates as well. I felt like now that they knew I was the pastor's kid, I had to project this made-up persona again. And I'm sure I didn't even realize I was projecting a persona when I did, even though the church wasn't as it was back then. I still put up that fake persona. Eventually, I opened up to my leader and said everything. I said I felt like I was hardwired to act a certain way when I'm around certain people. It's why I couldn't feel the love and support from my friends in church because they weren't loving and supporting the real me, the only the fake me that I projected onto them. My leader said I had to be more myself and I agreed, but oh boy was it a struggle. It was a long process before I was finally able to just be myself around the people in church. A few years later, I was added to the worship team as their keyboardist. It served as the perfect distraction for me. I never had to worry about what people thought of me, if I was sitting straight or not. It was great. I, beg I began to realize God's unconditional love for me. It's not about who I am or what I do or don't do. He loves me relentlessly, just as I am. God never called me by my title, but by my name. After my leader told me to be myself in the community, he soon left us, and as the days went by, I slowly became the authentic me that I wanted to be. And I don't think I even realized it. As I began to rest in God's love for me, I began to see the many blessings and advantages of being a pastor's kid. There are times when people would still use the line, you are a pastor's kid, therefore, but I choose not to be affected anymore. Anyways, I've been babbling for far too long. My name is Ezekiel Ong. Thank you for listening to my focus testimony. Perhaps Zeke's story resonated with you. Like Zeke, you are projecting a persona that is not the real you. And as a result, you feel a sadness and loneliness in your heart. If you are that kind of person, I want to pray for you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for whoever is watching this video lord god who is feeling so empty because he is not receiving the love that he wants give this person the courage to be true to who he is 
and to be true to who she is. Lord, I pray that they will know you as their personal Lord and Savior. And while I was saying that, you're saying, yes, I want to know you as my Lord and Savior. Pray the short prayer with me. Jesus, I come to you. I ask you to come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Save me from my sadness. Save me from my sins. Forgive me and cleanse me from all kinds of wrongdoings, from all kinds of unrighteousness. Be my Lord and Savior and guide me today. Give me the courage to live a life that is devoid of fakeness. Instead, help me to walk in truth and in search of your goodness and love for me. Amen.